Okay, so for the first step for the profiteroles with chocolate sauce, it's asking you to set the oven to either gas mark 7 or 210 degrees Celsius, which I've done, and to grease and flour a baking tray. So I'm going to just that step just now. I've got my baking tray here and I'm going to grease it so I've got a bit of oil in the bowl and I've got a pastry brush so I'm just going to grease it not too much oil and with my flour dredger I'm going to flour so I'm going to sieve my 75 grams of flour now in the recipe it says strong white flour but you can use plain flour now i have brought the water the salt the sugar and the butter to the boil um, and i've just taken it off the heat and i'm going to immediately add the flour it was on the grease cook paper and I am going to beat all this together. It should kind of end up looking like mashed potatoes. Should be nice and smooth, leave the sides of the pot and then what you're going to do is just let that cool eh, for a few minutes before we add the eggs. So I'm on to step five in the recipe now, um, which is to beat two eggs in a measuring jug, which I have here. And then I'm going to gradually add it to the pot um, and I'm going to beat the mixture really well um, until I've added all of the eggs. And the mixture should become nice and smooth and glossy. At first, it looks a bit slimy and it looks as if you're not going to um, be able to get it to a nice dough but if you keep working it you will get there so i'm going to add eggs gradually and just work it in maybe slightly tilt your pot and you can see it looks a wee bit slimy and it starts to break up but don't worry just keep beating it will start to all come together if you added the eggs too soon um, the mixture would be too hot and the eggs would actually start to cook a wee bit so you that's why you need to leave it to cool a wee bit so see how it's starting to come together and that mixture has absorbed the eggs you can see it's starting to come together again so now i'm ready to add another bit of the egg So there you can see I've added in all of the egg gradually and I've now got a nice soft um, mixture. It should be, um, when it drops down, it should kind of go in a kind of V. So when you're dropping it, it should do that kind of V um, as it drops down like that. It should go into a V and that way you know you've got the right consistency. Last thing I need to add to our shoe pastry mixture is 1.25 ml using my measuring spoons. 
um, of vanilla essence. So I'm just going to give that a final beat in to make sure that flavourings in that mixture and then it's ready for piping onto our baking tray. Okay. I'm now on to step six of the recipe where I'm transferring the mixture to a piping bag and I've got a disposable piping bag here um, with a plain nozzle, so just a nozzle like that. Um, don't worry if you don't have a piping bag or nozzle, you can actually just use a teaspoon to spoon the mixture onto your baking tray. So I quite like to put my piping bag like this over a tall glass just so that it gives my hands free to kind of put the mixture in. So I'm using a spatula to get the mixture into the bag. So now I've got my baking tray here and I'm going to pipe even size profiteroles onto the baking tray. Now they do kind of puff up, so be careful not to put them too close together. You can, if you wanted if it helped, kind of mark out where you're actually going to put the profiteroles um, on the flour. So, let's see. Okay, so just squeezing gently and then lifting off. Hold the piping bag straight up and down, gently squeeze and try to get as even amount as possible. actually tell you to do this in the recipe but this is something that I like to do when I'm making profiteroles is to get a wee bowl of just cold water and just using your clean hands just your fingertips there just dab them in the water and just dab it gently over the top and it means you can neaten them up slightly And then we're going to grab our oven gloves and we're going to put them in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes um, until you can see that they're quite firm to touch and then what we'll do is we will keep them in the oven but we'll switch off the oven and leave in for at least another 10 possibly 20 minutes they should be puffed up and quite hollow. If we take them out too early, they might sink and flatten. So we want to keep them puffed up. Okay, so here are the profiteroles, the shoe pastry. You can see how much they've puffed up. Um, and they look much bigger than they did when they went in the oven. Now these were in for about 12 to 13 minutes with the heat and then another 10 minutes with the oven switched off, but they're still quite hot. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to um, put a, use a skewer just to pierce a hole in the base, just to let some of the, the steam out. And I'm going to leave them to cool completely on a cooling tray. Um, because we're going to put cream inside them and obviously if we put cream inside them when they're hot or warm the cream is just going to melt so i'm just piercing a hole this is just a wee cake decorating tool but you could use a wee vegetable knife or if you've got a skewer Now, 
as my choux pastry is cooling, I'm going to whip up the cream. So in the recipe, it tells us to have 150 millilitres of whipping cream. Um, so you could use whipping cream or double cream would be absolutely fine. And I'm going to whisk the cream until it's of piping consistency. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like, but with fresh cream, you have to be really careful not to over whip the cream. So as it starts to become thick, just watch the speed um, of your electric beater, okay? So to begin with, I'm going to put it up high and then I'm just going to watch the consistency of my cream changing and then I'll change the speed gradually down. Now, the cream is still really runny, but I can see that it is starting to thicken because as I'm whisking, I can see that it's leaving a trail um, at the bottom. So just be careful at this point that you're not keeping the speed up too high. So I'm just going to maybe take it down a notch. Now, you can see it's definitely become a lot thicker and it's starting to hold on to my whisks. Um, so it's almost there. So you have to be really careful that we don't over mix at this. Okay, it's definitely pretty thick now. So I do not want it any thicker than this. The next thing I'm going to do is add in um, a spoonful of icing sugar just to sweeten the cream so it's thick so I'm going to use my measuring spoons to do this so in the recipe it tells us to fold in the icing sugar so So I'm now ready to pipe the cream into my profiteroles, they've cooled down completely. I've got my cream in a piping bag, um, I've got a smaller nozzle this time um, just to actually, so I can insert the cream into the profiterole. Now you pierced a hole um, in the base of the profiterole before, you might need to make that a wee bit bigger with but, uh, perhaps a vegetable knife so that we can pipe the cream in. So you're just going to put the nozzle in and then just gently fill that with cream. now filled with cream. So I've arranged three uh, profiteroles on each plate um, because we're serving it for four portions. I've got my chocolate sauce here ready which is just melting a wee bit of um, dark chocolate and stirring a spoonful of double cream through that so i've got that uh, the sauce here give it a good mix so that we can drizzle that over the top so just using a wee spoon i'm just going to drizzle the sauce over the top Any splashes 
of the sauce like this. I'm just going to clean that off with a paper towel and just make sure that each of my plates are clean. 